Please welcome to the stage the founder and CEO of Roblox, David Bazuki. Thank you. Thanks for doing this, Dave. So you are Thank fresh you. off of your annual developer conference just two weeks ago in San Francisco. Yeah. I watched the um, the opening keynotes. And Thank you. It seemed like the biggest crowd reaction you got was PlayStation support, actually. So I guess my first question is, what took so long? It's a great question, and thank you for having me here. So we put so much focus on mobile quality over the last couple of years. It's our hugest market. We started as a PC product, went to Mac, and the vision of connecting people around the world on every platform has always been the vision. Um, mobile, we got into really good shape, uh, Xbox in good shape, and then we started rolling up new platforms. As you can imagine, the creator community loves PlayStation because all of their existing creations are going to work there. And so for all of these creators that are making a living and making new businesses, it's just an immediate expansion of their business. So, Was there anything unique about PlayStation from an economics or business partnership perspective that took time, or was it all technical? Nothing too unique. I think every platform has been very thoughtful in when they start to allow social cross-platform mm -hmm. everywhere. And I, I think five or ten years ago when we started this notion, Xbox and PlayStation were arguably a little more walled gardenish. Mm -hmm. But that vision of um, connecting and communicating in a 3D space, no matter where you are, with the best user interface, the best camera, the best motion, whether it's a phone or a console, I think has really come to bear right now. Well, there's a lot of product, you know, kind of big picture stuff I want to get into, AI, et cetera. First, though, I want to touch quickly on uh, the layoffs that you guys recently did in your recruiting division. Yeah. Um, and I think you had not done layoffs during the pandemic, am I correct? We, we actually are continuing to hire. We've yeah. never done layoffs. One thing um, I think you can see, though, is probably in Q1 of 2023, we're growing our headcount at 50% a year, mm -hmm. which is very rapid, and that requires a very, very large recruiting team. Mm -hmm. we're, we, we've committed and we shared the notion that over next year, our bookings is going to grow faster than our headcount. So our headcount growth is probably not going to be 50% next year. So that doesn't say anything bigger about the state of, of your business? No, absolutely not. I think we've, we've done this amazing job of just continuing continuing to grow steadily through the through all of this over the last two years. Let's talk about aging up the platform. So you have been making this big push to get people above 17 with on the platform with exclusive experiences. Yeah. You're verifying identity with ID. Um, it's relatively new. You're only, I think, a couple months in or so. How's it going? I actually, I made a new Roblox account from scratch. Thank about, you. Well, I did it purposely <laughs> to see the experiences. So this is yeah. about two hours ago. And the front page for me was, after I put my age and everything, it was still a lot of games that, frankly, I'm, I'm not going to play, kids' games. Yeah. So it seems like you're still kind of lagging on that, that content that would get someone like me on the platform. Yeah, I think that's a leading indicator. And, and if we roll back the clock four, five, six, seven years when we were much smaller pre-public, that vision of creating an immersive platform that connects people around the world, that allows them to socialize, do things together. Um, we even saw back then, this has to be in every country, this has to be in all ages. And so we started with the notion that this is going to be a platform for 60-year-olds and 60-year-olds. The most recent, I think, earnings report, we shared that 17 through 24 fastest growing segment on the platform, mm -hmm. growing, I think, north of 33% year on year. So we've actually stopped using the term aging up right now like we have a very substantial over 17 user base the thing you were experiencing is we have started allowing our creators when you're validated with your photo ID and we know for sure you're 17 to start easing into some of those more, more mature experiences mm -hmm. that you might consider kind of grown up experiences. And I've seen some trailers uh, like there was one you guys showed at RDC a couple of weeks ago that looked like Grand Theft Auto and Roblox. I mean, it was the graphics were very impressive. It's not oh, thank you. It's <laughs> thank you. It's not the blocky kind of thing that you think yeah. of with Roblox. And so I can see where it's going, but 
I guess right now when you're telling me that, you know, that demographic is growing the fastest, what, what are they doing on the platform? Because yeah, I just don't, it, I don't see the experiences. That... It's surprising the amount of older people that played just a wide range of experiences and come to socialize. I was, I was in Canada hanging out with some third cousin at a family reunion, 24 year old guy who works on the railroad as an engineer. And he said, yeah, I'm really excited to meet you because all of the mechanics at CN Railroad are playing Roblox. And I said, what is going on? Like, <laughs> that's too good to be true. And they're like, yeah, we're playing Jailbreak and we're playing, hmm. you know, some of these experiences. So so they are playing these experiences, you know, that the level of social, the level of immersion, the level of being together with your friends, no matter where they are, is somewhat universal. So that, you know, that's doing surprisingly well for us. This is kind of a big picture question, but I'm curious about what, you want to be. I think there's this interesting gap between where Roblox is today, what it's been historically, and how you talk about the company. Yeah. And in my mind, you could easily be content to just go after the entire gaming market. I mean, it's bigger than the music and the movie industry combined, but you seem more focused on building a, a next generation, almost social network. You think you talk about yeah. this as a communications platform. Why go that direction? Is the gaming industry not big enough? I, mean, I think that's a great question. I mean, and we, we say it publicly that our goal would be to get to a billion daily active people on the platform. And I think our vision of what we're working on goes really almost to the future of communication. It goes to the evolution of the mail system, to the telegraph system, to the phone system, to as we saw in COVID, the video system. We, we just think inevitably there's a generation beyond that, which is immersive 3D communication, whether it's playing together, whether it's trying to graduate from high school together during the midst of COVID, whether it's a simulation of our Roblox office inside Roblox. Mm -hmm. um, we go and have a simulation of our office and we come together for serendipitous events, whether it's going to a concert. So our, our belief is this type of uh, technology is bigger than gaming. Gaming is a part of it, side-by-side -side concerts and working together. So I think we've evolved to a utility vision of this type of platform. I think you made a prediction at RDC a couple of weeks ago about dating. Do you think people yeah. are going to be dating in Roblox? It, it was really fun when we made this prediction because we were very careful on that slide. Yeah. And, and you saw the 17 plus people ID validated <laughs> in 17 plus experiences. So the parents don't have a heart attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Given our history of safety and civility and the focus on that. But ultimately, what's really interesting about the dating market, there's probably a third of the population that won't go on Bumble or Tinder or Hinge or, or whatever, just because of awkwardness. In an immersive 3D avatar type communication where you can be Shrek and I can be whoever I want to be, there's actually... Um, there's actually a certain way to, I'll be Donald Duck. Okay. There, there's a way, um, there, there's actually a little bit of a breakdown of the friction of the fear of a, mm. a video call. So, so I actually do believe that'll happen. I do believe someday someone will build a, a dating app on Roblox. It'll be very safe. It'll be for 17 and up people, hmm. and it'll be an interesting way for people to connect. Talk to me about this advertising push you guys are also making and how it, connects to the changing demographics of the user base. Are they related? And how big do you see the ads business becoming? I think it's really interesting. The, the amount of engagement is north of 5 billion hours per month on the platform. And more and more of that is north of 17-year-old engagement. And when we think about what advertising is, a lot of it is fandom. It's seeing a poster of something I like, maybe historically seeing something in a newspaper, uh, more recently seeing something as a web banner, and now more recently seeing something as a very native natural video segment or you know something like that. But there's, we do believe there's something beyond that, which is the 3D experience. For example, if we're in a retail store together and we're shopping and we can remember what's on the shelf and how it looks, whether it's shoes or makeup or whatever. And we do think that's going to be a very, very powerful experience for brands. We already have hundreds of brands on the platform. I was just seeing the, the most revised Gucci experience, which is radically amazing. It's, it's a simulation of their runway show. And in those experiences, there's both brand recognition, which is maybe harder to measure. There starts to be the acquisition of virtual goods, uh, Gucci purses and mm -hmm. those kind of things. And then ultimately there'll be um, 
um, at some point, um, not really announced or promised physical shopping as well. And, you know, that kind of shopping with your friend is a very social fun experience. How big do you see the ads business being? Is it something that could potentially be as big as your core business today? It's interestingly big. We're in a great position because we generate a, a really good business without advertising. So it gives us, I think, an opportunity to layer this in for older people in a very civil way, in a very careful way. But I think it's arguably undetermined how big it is. We will see based on the power of the memories that people have in their brands. Anecdotally, the uh, one of our, empl- uh, I think it's actually our C- CFO's friend was in Santa Monica and walking by a van store and their um, younger people wanted to go in there because they were familiar with that from Vans World on Roblox. So um, building digital memories and connecting with brands that are fun and exciting and then, you know, merging that with the physical world is new uncharted territory. On the topic of of growth, this is something I haven't heard you talk about since you went public. Um, A big part of your growth narrative when you went public, it was mentioned many times in the prospectus, for example, was this joint venture you had with Tencent in China. And less than a year after you went public, it got shut down with the explanation. I saw that your head of China is now your head of Japan. That's right. Where are you with China? Are you? So, I would say Tencent continues to be an amazing partner. We're being very, very careful in China. The, the dynamics in China right now have gone to the point where rather than envisioning a fully connected tight network, we have to imagine an autonomous network. And we're, in a sense, modernizing our infrastructure to the point where we can literally print a copy of Roblox in China and bring it to market there. So we continue to be very involved in China. We're optimistic about it. We have a great partnership with Tencent, but we're working on the infrastructure to support that. What does that mean, an autonomous version of Roblox? I think as you would look at any other platform or any other social media type company, you would we would look back over the last three to four years and see more and more, less and less information going back and forth between the U.S. and China to the point where I think the future will be very little goes back, for example, in a China situation. So you haven't given up on China? You're Absolutely just, not. Okay, no. interesting. So you recently put Roblox on the, the MetaQuest headset, and it's not officially in the store yet, but you got 1 million installs in five days, and it was yeah. in a beta where you have, to, you have yeah. to go find it. You can't just go download it from the That's store. That's right. That's right. Um, where do you see VR going as it relates to Roblox? There's the Vision Pro. Have you have you tried the Vision Pro? Uh, I have not tried a okay. Vision Pro. You got to try it. Will you guys be on Vision Pro? Are you a big believer in this headset wave that's coming? I, I'm a big believer long term in that the most immersive form of 3D experience will be VR type experience and. You know, there's some great sci-fi around what the far off future of VR is. I think our our vision is because we are a platform and because we work so hard on, you know, young creator shows up, builds something on Roblox, pushes a button, runs on any device, runs, is auto-translated into any language. Possibly they can build a business on top of that. There's a huge benefit to uh, being very, very good on all devices and tracking the growth of devices. So we can contribute to the growth of MetaQuest, and I'm excited about that. Um, If someday there are 500,000 or 500 million VR headsets, Roblox will be a huge part of it. But I, I think we're not in the position of predicting the growth of any hardware device what about ar ar so not fully immersive but ar glasses. ar is is also super interesting right what is the future going to be mixed reality is the future going to be lighter weight less overlaid type stuff is the future ultimately going to be some of the vision of some of the companies that have been started someday i think i wrote a blog post about it 10 years ago we will have full overlay whether it's contact lenses and it'll be lightweight and all of that I think AR is very interesting when we think about immersive 3D communication because there's communication where we're simulating this world and we're sitting here together. 
There's also communication where, you know, grandma and grandpa are sitting at the kitchen table. And I think AR starts to support that vision of, you know, some, some people are on VR devices, some people are on AR devices. You can either put grandma and grandpa in the chair or you can go to the, you know, the favorite family destination. So I think it's very interesting. Uh, we're going to have time for Q&A in a few minutes. So get your questions ready. We'll have about time for three or four questions. So you and I, a few uh, months ago, when we did the interview for Decoder, we talked a lot about AI and this kind of analogy to, I don't know if people have seen the last season of, of Westworld. Yeah. There's a, the main character has this job where she just goes in and talks to a computer and creates virtual worlds uh, as, a, as a narrator. And you said you see that happening on Roblox, oh, yeah. not, not in the not too distant future. And you all talked a little bit more about this at RDC a couple of weeks yeah, yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Where does generative AI intersect with what Roblox does? Yeah, I think one way to think about this is three big AI clouds that are accelerating creation and supporting the platform. One of these clouds has been there for two or three years. No one knows it. Safety, automatic translation, moderation, efficiency. We've been working on that for two or three years, and we probably have 70 AI pipelines to drive the efficiency of the business and the quality of the business. The middle cloud, which I think is a lot of energy right now, generative. You know, how easy is it to make creation happen for everyone? Vision on Roblox would be in addition to, say, competing on Project Runway and using digital scissors and a digital sewing machine, we would also use prompts. Um, I'd like a blue shirt, you know, buttons this color, and AI will start to generate that. So AI generative is very interesting for avatars, for clothing, for 3D experiences to really bring creation to everyone. And we're deep in on that. We've already shipped AI code generation to help creators create. We've shipped AI material generation. And I think having a company with amazing, a lot of user data flowing can help support and train those types of models. There's a third cloud way out there which is starting to imagine having a virtual doppelganger for example like if you wanted someone to take your place um if you wanted someone to meet me for five minutes before our meeting to just kind of figure things out i think that's the way off far future and it's not just generative ai but it's generative ai that might look and act like you in a virtual space so that's that's the more sci-fi future is so, that so that's like a that's an ai trained on my roblox persona and that's data exactly to be right. like me that's right if you so choose and you so want that, then that could be an opportunity. Dave is very good at these Q&As. He does them a lot at his conferences. I so oh, I do them with our you do developers. These Q- yeah, I'm just saying, give him good questions. Give him hard questions. Thank, he's, thank he's used you. To, thank you, yeah, I think. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Here we go. Um, um, hi, Alex and David. Kathy Hackle. I'm a tech and gaming executive at Journey, a Roblox player, and the mother of an 11-year-old Roblox developer that makes about $100 a month. Oh my uh, from his build. <laughs> so yay. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, during RDC, you, you gave one of your predictions. You said, a top fashion designer will be discovered on Roblox without having any experience in physical fashion. What is the role of fashion in the future of Roblox and direct to avatar? Uh, it's huge, right? Carly is on our platform. Parsons Design did a partnership with us at, at RDC. We saw a couple of the gowns that had been done in concert with some of the students there. They were absolutely amazing. And so one could imagine reducing the friction of creativity for a fashion designer to ultimately virtual design and then ultimately uh, AI supported design. And so it's interesting to imagine this is a prototype environment for fashion. You can try a lot of things more quickly than building the physical. You can get crowd feedback. There will someday be experiences where early designs are voted on. Uh, We've had things like that in a more simple simplistic way. And then you can imagine almost predicting what types of designs from top designers would be like welcome. So I I think it's really big. Thank you. Hi, my name is Neil Shankar. I'm a content creator. Um, I have always thought of Roblox as largely a metaverse company. In fact, my introduction to metaverse concepts was from a series of essays that Matthew Ball wrote a few years ago at which Roblox was largely the center of. Uh, Recently, I've become aware of a brand marketing push, I believe by your uh, sports division, to distance yourselves from metaverse connotations. Can you please tell us about that? 
Yeah, I wouldn't say that's a distancing. We we have evolved the terminology we've used. We've always used the term of human co-experience or bringing people together. The metaverse context, as we know, was coined um, with the book Snow Crash a long time ago. And it, it's interesting, it's fl- gone and ebbed through various flows. But we, I guess we imagine this more as a communication and connection platform. We've never really used the term metaverse a lot and i think you know going forward we'll probably always think of ourselves as a communication and connection platform hi my name is uh, alex krugloff i run a a startup called Popid, which is also in the social gaming space but for much older uh, yeah. user base i'm curious when, when you think about 24 hours in a day and you talk about the future that you see with a billion daily actives and all kinds of time spent not just playing games but anything from dating to shopping and so on what are people not going to be doing and switching? So Clay Christensen has this concept of, of, of jobs to be done. Like, who are they firing? What, what jobs are they firing in order to be on Roblox? And I ask this from point of view of a parent of three kids, the middle of whom, for all intents and purposes, it's crack. Uh, when it comes to Roblox. It's highly, highly yeah. regulated by our parents. So how dystopian is this going to be? Yeah, we're actually very optimistic. And I think we're optimistic because in the specter of social media, there's a wide range of things that people do on social media. Some are consume a lot of short video content and trigger dopamine. Some are compare my life with your life and accelerate FOMO. <laughs> Some are hopefully similar to the feeling of, well, my kid's on the phone with their friends. They're connecting, inventing, hanging out. So I'm I'm actually somewhat optimistic that the future of our direction is bringing people together when they can't be in real life. Hi, uh, Casey Newton from Platformer. When I look at Roblox, I see something that looks a lot like an app store uh, that increasingly looks like it wants to be an operating system, which to me would seem to put it on a kind of collision course with an iOS or an Android or maybe even the Oculus (coughs) store. So I wonder how you think about that and how you think you can get to that billion daily active people without owning your own hardware. One one thing to think about when we imagine millions of creators and we can go to ancient Egypt or we can go to our office or whatever in immersive 3D is that content cannot all be shipped to the device. It's just impossible to have that much content. And so that content needs to come to the device in a very unique architecture where there's very low latency, there's a lot of local 3D simulation, But at the same time on the cloud, that content needs to load and connect very fast. And I think this architectural inevitability of a 3D connection platform where we can go everywhere instantly is maybe what you're thinking about or referring to. I would say Apple, you know, these platforms are very aware of, I think, this inevitable architecture for 3D and are actually very big supporters of it. Hey, Andrew with The Verge. Last week, we saw some leaked internal emails from Microsoft's Xbox CEO, Phil Spencer, and he talked about the future of AAA game publishing and development. It's just really expensive. People have to take you know, bigger bets to succeed, and it's just getting harder and harder. I wanted to get your take as someone who I would argue has defined the iPad kids generation and what their relationship with games is going to be in the future as sort of just the model continues to change? Yeah, I would say um, internally, we have nothing near a bullseye on AAA gaming. Internally, there's always a struggle to have all of our engineers working on mid-range Android phones as a primary, very difficult platform. So I I think our focus is on performance on mid-range low-end devices rather than the high-end. Over time, you could imagine even those low-end devices start to support more and more realism, and it becomes easier to deploy on the cloud, have an existing social networking, those kind of things. So there may be some natural evolution, but definitely nothing deliberate on our part. Hi, Jay Peters with The Verge. You mentioned walled gardens in terms of like PlayStation and Xbox, but I kind of feel like Roblox is its own walled garden. We see lots of other shared virtual experience apps like Fortnite or Meta's Horizon Worlds. Is there any chance or any thinking on some kind of interoperability between all that stuff? Yeah, I think there's two types of interoperability. One would just be on you know, valuable items like a pair of shoes from Nike and whether the NFT supports the interchange. That may not be a 3D graphical technical spec. That may be a little bit more of a cloud ownership spec. 
I think that this genre is evolving so quickly. The to network hundreds of people, to have realistic 3D. What um, do my are my shoes ultimately made of leather? Do they actually bend and flex? That the the technology is going to go so quickly here that any 3D interchange is going to be almost like a five year old file format. So I, I think if if you see maybe less interchange, I think it's less that way. We do bring in every type of industry file format that we. We can and we're trying to open that up as fast as we can do you think like five years out will there be energy towards creating some kind of interchangeable file format or is that something i, I think there is already i think because roblox is based on kind of under the covers really trying to be a 3d world simulator you know the wheels fall off the car the car falls on the ground you know your clothing is made of cloth those kind of things that those those file formats may not support a kind of physically rich description so i imagine for a long time when we bring in avatar files or something we'll be using ai to upsample them into a physical manifestation Thank you. Thanks. All right, we're getting pulled off the stage okay. here. Dave, thank Dave, you for the thank time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes.